generally when you look at any of the targets that we set at the beginning we've gone way over them uh, we've uh, we've either met them or we've gone way over and in some cases it's multiple times what we aim to do so uh, numbers of people involved we've got numbers of visitors things like that I, I think so far it was up to something like 11,000 visitors on, on the moors. So that was a major part of what we were trying to do, connect people to the moors, get them to visit the place, get them fascinated and inspired about moorland and enjoying it. Um, we've also had a, a lot of education work happening. We've had thousands and thousands of um, people coming on school trips. We've done teacher training. We've, uh, we've made heritage, we've made archaeology and things like prehistory come to life through things like that. We've come up with a whole set of published resources online. We've got leaflets, we've got walk cards, we've got... So it actually, in just about all aspects, we've, we've actually done really well. So there's probably too much to list in terms of what's gone well. Um, generally though, across the scheme, we've, we've been very successful. Okay. Well, I think if I'm honest, that Jason, Faye and David have done a really good job in all aspects of it. But I suppose the things that sort of stand out for me are some of the landscape work they've, that's been done, particularly in the Valley of the Rocks, with the changes to the car park. I think it's gone very well indeed. So it's had very good engagement across lots of different areas. So primarily for me, this is about the farmer landowner engagement side of it. So areas like reconnecting, um, where we've had uh, workshops and looking at areas like swaling, which is very important, not only in terms of farming kind of management, but also biodiversity and also our cultural side of things. But also areas like uh, the more keepers, because one of the big issues around for farmers is keeping succession. And part of that is about how do we maintain all the skills up in the moorlands because you don't want people to be going down, down the hills and just not coming back with any of the skills and therefore losing that kind of cultural link. So that's been very important. I think um, most teachers will accept that a lot of the time that they spend is in planning. You have to plan, A, if there is room for a bus to get there, if there is car parking space, are the facilities for the children, do you need wet weather gear, what is the outcome of the visit they are planning, and all this has to be done outside the classroom. So, in other words, to have all this work done for you, is a tremendous help and the feedback from the teachers has been amazing from at least 50 different schools in the area. Alone, um, the Environment Agency just couldn't achieve what the partnership can achieve. Um, it brings together such a range of expertise, skills, knowledge um, and for somewhere like Exmoor it's so important to bring that together. Um, a project that we've been really keen on progressing is the Crayfish project um, and that can't be done on its own with the Environment Agency. It needs the, the authority, it needs the volunteers and their enthusiasm, it needs the organisation and coordination, um, and a partnership project such as this is key to delivery of a project such as that. I think it's benefited in many ways, actually. We've been involved right at the beginning when the project started, and as we are a large landowner, we own lots of moorland, so we had a vested interest in getting involved. But I think the two, two things probably that really stand out, one is the Moor Keeper project, which we were involved in on the ground. Uh, and secondly, also the Big Adventure Days, um, where we've got together, we've become very much key partners in, in uh, setting those up uh, with our ranger team. They've been really valuable. Yeah, I think to begin with, uh, being a new team, there were things like trying to figure out exactly how projects would work. There was always, there was always going to be that. You know, there were very, very good project plans, um, some of which we had to rethink slightly and adapt. We had to do plenty of adaptation as we went along. We've had a very flexible team. The partners have each brought their own expertise and experience into that too. So they've been able to advise us on how we should go about something and get over any difficulties that, that we found. Um, there's always difficulties with things like uh, trying to work with uh, perhaps partners or different members of the community who don't see things in the same way, uh, but we try and work, we've tried to work with everybody. Not so much difficult, I think that we started off, we had um, a resource um, availability for primaries, 
primary school children age um, and I think the older generations, the teachers of the older um, key stage three and four um, were jealous that they didn't have the online resource as well. I wouldn't say anything hasn't gone well. There have been issues in particular projects that have had to work around whether you know there are there are difficulties so but I think that's a fairly normal thing. For me it's always you know we're at the wrap-up kind of stage of it all so my thought is well what is legacy? So it's really important that there is some consideration given to how does all of the information that's been learned get passed on to those that can use it and make sure that they do use it. The other thing is is this project was very valid for five years. It should be valid for longer, or there should be aspects of it which should be valid for longer. Therefore, picking out those parts which can be given some new legs, maybe given a different uh, direction and a bit of energy just to keep it going, because it, it would be a shame to call it quits and just to forget about it all. Not really. As I said before, I think it, it's all gone really well. I suppose two aspects would be the sort of the whole apl application process of this of this funding right from the start going through stage one and stage two seems to take a a very long time and because it, it took so such a long time um, partners tended to change and we didn't get a uh, the same continuity of input and I also think some of the work that Jason and others have done with with other partners bodies has been um, complicated by the, maybe the lack of interest of some of those partners to really deal things in a timely fashion and that's probably been slightly um, ineffective and has taken more time than it should have done. Okay um, from my perspective and I think I'm correct in representing the Environment Agency there really hasn't been a negative to this project. Um, it's been positive um, I came in part of the way through the project, so it had already started. So in my role, I've actually been incredibly inspired by the project um, and really how much the project has achieved. So I, I, there's nothing negative, really. I can say it's very positive. I think the, I think the breadth of the um, project, there are so many different facets involved, and, and to get our organisation involved in as many as we could was quite a challenge. Um, but I think it paid off. I think... Um, we probably were challenged in getting enough volunteers uh, involved, but that has grown tremendously well. We now have a real army of volunteers, and through the project we've been able to achieve that, which we wouldn't otherwise. Some of our projects have been very quick to get off the ground, but in the early days in particular, some of them were very slow, and people weren't necessarily interested in, in every project. Uh, I can think of, for example, uh, more keepers, where the idea was we, we really wanted farmers championing them more and their patch of moorland and getting involved with things but also helping to coordinate and being kind of at the forefront and, and that succeeded, we did that but to begin with people uh, partly didn't understand what the project might be or what it should be about um, or certain organisations might not have been uh, confident about having a moor keeper because they weren't sure how it would fit with uh, their, org their organisation's priorities at the time or their staff changes. Just as we were starting off, there were cuts being made, uh, people were seriously having to think about staffing. Um, so to, to consider taking on a new moorkeeper, a new member of staff, when they were also having to consider perhaps cutting down on their teams, that, that was tricky. So there were difficulties like that which well, we couldn't have predicted or we couldn't have known. We're going, to, we're going to be there, um, but we, we got around that kind of thing. So that's one example of where we've overcome difficulties and then succeeded. I mean, we had uh, three more keepers out there and they all did really good work. I don't think really improved or changed. I, th I think it's about continuation. And certainly if you look at the amount of volunteering days that have been achieved under this project or, or, or the amount of young people that have been touched by Exmoor through this. It's just something that you know, I want to see continued uh, and, and developed. Yeah, I mean, uh, probably the most powerful thing has been the partnership approach, the fact that we've had lots of people around the table all agreeing that we've got good projects and, and getting on with that, um, advising it um, and directing it. It's made sure that we've had a balanced approach. It's made sure that we've considered everything that we should be considering. Uh, things have been well thought through, and and 
projects have been relevant, not just to one organisation or one group of people, but we've, we've had a broad set of projects and each of them has been very relevant for what it's trying to do and overall we've, we've had a, whole, a, a very balanced scheme here. I mean, I, th I suppose the biggest thing is going to be funding, so making sure that the funding is available for schemes like this. We've proven, certainly the team have proven, Jason and his team, that this can be a huge success in somewhere like Exmoor. And so I would like to see a commitment from HLF and other organisations maybe uh, to fund these in the future. I don't, to, to be honest, there isn't anything I'd change. I think this, this partnership has set a very high level and it will be important to hold on to the momentum um, that, and the enthusiasm that this partnership has inspired. And I think that will be the greatest challenge going forward is to match this and to find a partnership or a future project that can really meet what this partnership has achieved. Not unexpected, um, the take-up of the uh, teachers uh, using the online resource has been huge and from quite a, far, a long way away, which uh, is very encouraging. I mean, the good outcome for me is just relationships that you develop with all the other partners. So that will carry on for us anyway. So just understanding how we can do things, whether it's with government agencies, with the park or uh, people like you know the National Trust, it's very important to us. Yeah, I've learned a lot more about Exmoor wider than the, the patch where I'm based, I think, as much as anything. And I've also found it really valuable working with other partners. You understand more about their organisations, and I'm actually thinking now about moving forward, how we can keep working together once this partnership finishes. I think it, this, this partnership has demonstrated just how much can be achieved. When you get the right people together with the right funding, uh, you can achieve so much for the benefit of well, Exmoor in this case, but actually it gives a, a perfect example of how this can be delivered similarly elsewhere. There, there are plenty of them. It, it's good that we've generated quite a few things that we didn't necessarily set out to do, but then they've happened either because of people's great ideas or we've seen an opportunity and thought, right, actually, we should build on that. So, for example, we've had uh, the Promoting Exmoor Ponies project that's gone really well and we've invested a lot in helping to safeguard ponies. Um, we've bought equipment, for example, for the moorland herd owners to use. Um, but an unexpected thing that has come out of it was, well, we were doing some education and, and outreach and, and doing work with schools, but we wanted to do more than that. And through talking to the moorland herd owners, the idea came up of doing something perhaps focused over a week or a weekend to to raise awareness about the herds and those ponies out there, things like there are people looking after them, they are owned, uh, they're vulnerable uh, and they're a really important integral part of the landscape, right? If you come and see moorland, you're going to see Exmoor ponies and people come to the moor and often to see those. So we've come up with the Exmoor Pony Festival and launched that. That's then gone on, we've, we've passed that on and and that should grow and grow. But that, that was something that succeeded, did really well. It, we didn't know if it would, and it was completely unexpected because we didn't aim to do an Exmoor Pony Festival. It was something we managed to create and launch in, in partnership, and that, that worked really well. Um, I think if I haven't mentioned volunteers enough, that's got to be a big one. Uh, I think it's something like 3,000 days of volunteer time that we've had uh, dedicated to helping us achieve all we've achieved. We've done tons and when you look at the, the figures and the, the numbers of things, numbers of people, uh, numbers of visitors for example, I think something like 11,000 visitors to Moreland that we've generated through the project is probably even more than that because then you add on uh, school visits and it's like seven, eight thousand school kids that, that have come, um, or various students from universities and colleges, all have come up and done education work on the moors. Um, that kind of thing has been amazingly uh, successful. What else have volunteers done? They've helped us with volunteer surveys, they've helped us deliver training, they've shared their expertise, they've been photographers for us, they've been educators for us, they've done tons of stuff, they've done research, 
they've done archaeology surveys, absolutely anything you can think of, volunteers have been getting involved. And that's been an amazing part of, of, of what's happened as, as, you know, as a result of the Landscape Partnership Scheme.